So this is a quick look at spinal mobility and also to introduce how in Anatomy in Motion we look at how the body is like clockwork. It has cogs um, where a cog of a clock will rotate one way and create a structure next to it ro to rotate in the opposite way. Um, and one really critical place you've got that happening in the human body is our pelvis, rib cage, and skull relationship. So often if we talk about spinal extension or spinal flexion, we forget that there's a component of exchange where when we extend our spine we should get some flexion in the neck and when we flex our spine we should get some extension in the neck. So I've taken uh, Chris and popped him up against a wall here so that we've actually brought his skull, ribcage and pelvis in line to bring uh, gravity into the equation. So where somebody's struggling with a forward head posture, the head and the ribcage come out of line. Bring him up against a wall and we can have good alignment centre of gravity passing through the head, through the ribcage, into the pelvis. In that place, if we can teach the brain to articulate the cogs, the skull goes forward, the ribcage goes back, and the and pelvis goes anteriorly, then we're starting to communicate to the brain about how exactly we want our spine to work when we're upright. So I'll just take this exercise. The point of Chris's head against the wall, I'm going to ask him to slide it up the wall. And what we should see is automatically we should see an elevation in his ribcage. Let's go through that again. So slide the head down, you see the ribcage drop. Slide the rib head up and we'll see the ribcage rise. Also, if the cue is difficult for the client, we can talk about drawing the chin in or combining the two. Look at the tissues. So he starts to flex his, the muscles in his neck, but he starts to stretch the muscles in his chest and his upper abdominals. Critical for all you guys who struggle with posture, uh, sitting at a desk all day, for instance. So we get the head to come down, rib cage to lift up, and I also want to see the pelvis anterior tilt as well. So when we bring this in, we get a real good stretch of the abdomen, a big opening of the chest, and a good strong flexion in the neck at the front, while in the back, the tissues are shortening, extending the spine, and getting a stretch in the neck at the same time. So let's just go through that. Imagine the head just sliding up the wall and down the wall. Up the wall, brings the chin in, Lift the rib cage, anterior tilts the pelvis, and vice versa, the opposite. Good. So we're actually getting an experience, an expression of movement for the spine. We're getting a huge extension of the thoracic and lumbar, coupled with a flexion of the cervical spine, and vice versa. When we get an extension of the cervical spine, we're getting a flexion of the thoracic and the lumbar as well. So what this is is the brain gets to perceive instead of one fixed position all day long, you actually get to explore both. And when you get a really good appreciation of what both movements feels like for you, your resting place will be chosen subconsciously, unconsciously as the middle point between those two places. So the bigger you make these flexion and extension movements coupled with the neck going in the opposite direction, the more aware you'll become of standing up tall and standing straight. And often when people peel themselves away off the wall on this exercise, they, they really notice that they feel like they're standing taller.